Hey friends, welcome to the Swing My Heart podcast with your hosts, Kristen, Nicole, and Hannah. Come join our Porch Swing conversations. Filled with lots of faith, hope, and heart. Hey everyone, we're back with a very special episode. We have two very special guests joining us today, Carrie and Morgan from the Honest to Goodness podcast. Hey y'all, thanks for having us. Hey guys. Oh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure having you on. We're yeah, so, so we're excited. Fun. Yeah. I think me and Carrie are probably going to have the biggest problem, like, not talking over each other. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we already do it a ton on our podcast episodes, so I can only imagine how it's going to be on here. Yeah. So, fair warning. Apologies in advance. <laughs> yeah, apologies. That is completely okay. Today we... Today, we will be recapping the Up TV original Christmas movie from 2021, Snow Day for Christmas. It premiered on November 14th. It stars Kayla Wallace as Kaylee, Jeremy Gabot as Ethan Cunningham, Juliet Hawk as Lily Cunningham, Cassidy Slingsby as Rose Cunningham, Megan K. Lees as Margaret Cunningham, Brendan J. Rowland as Miles Cunningham, Dave Kenneth McKinnon as Kyle Bryant, and Laura Yinga as Gina. And a little trivia for all the Hardys out there, Kayla Wallace stars as Fiona Miller in When Calls the Heart, and Jeremy Gabo played Ray Wyatt in season four of When Calls the Heart. It's so crazy that two Hardys are starting a movie together and they start on uh, when calls the heart but not yes. at the same time yes so that's, that's awesome that's, that's pretty cool yeah that's yeah. awesome i had completely I, forgotten about jeremy being on when calls the heart I, I, did too. I did too i did too it was crazy yeah. it's a cool, yeah, it's cool awesome time right on the show yeah he wasn't on there for very long like he was only on there for like that one season right yeah, right. season four. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think he was on any other season before that. Mm-hmm. Nope, just the one season. The synopsis. What's... See, I told you I'm going to be interrupting a lot. It's okay. <laughs> I, I like you were listing off the uh, names. I'm like, that's a lot of Cunninghams. <laughs> the, was were the Cunninghams? Was that from Happy Days? Was that their family name or something? I don't know. I believe so, yes. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, we just went back to Happy Days. (laughs) Yep. I'm by me. That was a good show. (laughs) I love Happy Days, yeah. Uh, So the synopsis from the Up TV website reads, Kaylee, a young au pair, finds herself unable to return home for the holidays when a snowstorm derails her plans. In spite of her own disappointment, she is determined to teach the girls she watches alongside their charming uncle, the magic of Christmas. Will this series of events lead to a perfect Christmas? So Morgan, Carrie, and Hannah, what were your first thoughts on this movie? All right. Who's going first? I guess I am. <laughs> um, I loved it. Like, it was typical. I will say that. It was typical. Like, um, but I thought it was really sweet. Um, I love seeing Kayla in a lead role because like she's she's a very independent character in One Calls the Heart but she's still quote unquote a side character so I loved getting to see her in a lead role like this and I think like my thought watching her was that I feel like she is going to be a natural as a mother someday like she just seems so natural with these kids I was thinking the same thing. She's a really good actress. Oh, yes, she is. But no, she, no, I agree with Carrie. It really was fun to see her being outside of this universe because we've only, I don't know about you guys, but I've only ever seen her in We Call Star. That's the only roles I've ever seen her be in so far. Um, So, one, it was really weird to see her in regular clothes and not like in the 1900 style uh, clothing. So, that's one note I I took automatically. But another one was like, it was just, 
I've always kind of liked the nanny storylines, like the nanny movies where like you you see this young woman like taking care of these kids that are not hers, that are not related to her in any kind of way, and just being so selfless with them and so caring with them and like loving them and caring about them and worrying about them just like as if they were her own kids. I don't know why I've just always really liked those storylines. So this mo- this movie was really fun and to have Caleb in it was just really like fun too to be able to see her branch out, show a different side of her acting, even though it's still that cookie, that cookie cutter Hallmark feel to it still. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoyed it. Um, I think that it was just one of those good Christmas movies that I'll probably watch more than once next year. So mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with everything that's been said. I just think it was just so special, like we said, to see Kayla get her own movie. Like, mm-hmm. I just think she's such a talented actress and I just think she has such a positive personality, just like a sweet and kind personality. So to see her be in this role where she's taking care of these kids was just so special. And also to just see her alongside Jeremy, like they said, was also really cool too. I love that connection, seeing actors who've been on the same show do movies together. I just think it's yeah. really kind of a full circle moment, even though they never acted together in the show. Yeah. So yeah. I love this yeah. movie. So sweet. I agree. What would y'all rate the movie on a scale of one to 10? I was excited to say, what, 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 what scale are we doing here? Um, I would say probably a nine to 10. I would say maybe like a 9.5 and that 0.5 is simply for it being kind of cookie cutter. Yeah. Um, that it did, I mean, it had a little bit of its own um, differentness to it, I guess. Um, but it was, it was a really good movie. I was very impressed with it. Yeah, I would rate it nine out of ten too. Yeah. Yeah, same here. I, I agree with like Carrie. I mean, if it like I love the cookie cutter stuff, but sometimes I do wish that they would kind of pull like a little bit of a put a little wrench into the system and kind of just throw us a little, the, little something different. Yeah. I mean, it was different because I haven't seen Hallmark do a whole lot of like the au pair. Um, mm-hmm. I've seen them do, of course, like nannies. I mean, if anybody doesn't know, like there's a difference between them. Um but yeah, I would probably do like a 9.5. Yeah. Well, and we were talking about the the mom being slightly different um, in this one, like with her handling of it. We were yeah. talking about that earlier. So yeah. Right. Yeah, I'd give it about an eight or a nine for sure. Yeah. yeah. Do we want to start with the major plot points or just stuff that happened in the movie, like throughout the movie? Sure. The movie, it opens um, an exterior shot of the small town and a uh, home in that small town. And there is a girl who of course is Kayla Wallace's character. She's cleaning up around the house and waking up two kids and giving them their breakfast. And the breakfast is Christmas pancakes, a snowman and a reindeer. And then we find out the young girl's name is Kaylee. So what, what were y'all, uh, what did y'all think of that first opening scene? Well, first of all, I really like the name that her name is Kaylee, kind of a little bit twist on her actual name, Kayla. And it makes me wonder when they were filming this movie, how many times they just call her Kayla. Right. I was honestly thinking, I was was like, how many times did they call her Kayla instead of Kaylee? Yeah. (laughs) I probably would have, I probably, I know that like, I feel like the names are kind of important, but at the same time, it's like, if I was the writer that wrote this script, I probably would have changed as soon as I like casted Kayla. I would have changed the name because I, that would, that's just so close to each other. Yeah. I thought it was awesome, but at the same time, I'm sure it was confusing. On set, a little confused. Yeah. yeah, but I did love that they that she makes it like she makes everything uh, that she does with the kids really fun and festive, especially yeah. around Christmas time. And you know, mm-hmm. she puts her own like she personalizes it. She doesn't just yeah. fix them. Just I mean, I don't know what how she obviously we don't know what she does whenever she's it's not like Christmas time. But like for her to kind of add that little special touch to kind of like brighten their morning and wake them up to something good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those pancakes looked really good. I yeah. want some Christmas pancakes right now. That's true. Pancakes are good anytime. Yeah. I have to say, I wish I had that much pep to me in the morning. Right? Uh, I'm not a morning person in the least. So no. my kids will be getting Grinch pancakes for Christmas because that will be the mood of it. <laughs> My, my kids will be lucky they get anything probably more than like maybe some grits 
made in the microwave, guys. Like, made in the microwave grits. Not even the kind where you put it on the stove, okay? It's like microwavable grits with maybe some scrambled eggs to go with it. Oh, goodness. Because I, I'm not a morning person whatsoever. And I don't drink coffee either, so I can't say don't talk to me before right. I have my coffee. Right, same here. <laughs> I mean, I sometimes drink coffee, but it's not. I'm not the kind of person that has to have coffee. Like, you could talk to me before coffee. I still might not be rude. I mean, I still might be rude to you even after I've had coffee. So. <laughs> oh, goodness. I know they weren't in the movie. Like, I know they didn't have any of these in the movie, but are y'all a pan- more of a pancake person or a waffle person? I think it depends on what mood I'm in, honestly. Because I kind of like that. I think what I love about waffles is that they're kind of crunchier and like, yeah. I don't know. There's just that texture of waffles that's really fun. Like, the, I mean, not well, not fun, but just tastes good to me. Yeah, I know. So, it's yeah, yeah. I, like it. I, I like think it better. depends. See, I'm like, actually I not love- crazy about waffles because of the crunch. Now, my dad prefers waffles to pancakes because of the crunch, but I yeah. actually prefer pancakes because they're softer. So, yeah. 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 I, understand that. I, I mean, I like both for sure. Pancakes are nice because you can have like the different flavors. I feel yeah. like it's pretty standard, but pancakes, you can kind of branch out. Well, actually, like you can do pretty much the same thing with pancakes as you can waffles. You can have like blueberry yeah, waffles. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you can do just pretty much the same thing. Honestly, I like I don't really there's not a big difference between waffles and pancakes. In fact, I think you make I think you use pancake mix to make waffles. Yeah, you, yeah, I think a lot of people so, do. Yeah, that's true. Is it? Yeah, I think it's, it's really similar. <laughs> unless unless you're making them from scratch. Like if you're yeah. oh I love if you make them from scratch, yeah. then like with waffles, you would um beat the egg whites to make them fluffy like you're make, making meringue or whatever, and then do that. Uh, whereas with uh, pancakes, you don't do that. So at least yeah, that was the right. recipe we used. <laughs> yeah, I think that is how it is because my mom makes homemade. She used to make homemade pancakes when mm. me and my brother was younger. And y'all, she made the best, best pancakes ever. I love pancakes. If y'all are, I'm sure y'all, have y'all ever been to Nashville? I'm sure y'all mm-hmm. have been in Nashville. I've never been in Nashville. I've been to Tennessee. I've been in like the Pigeon Forge, like Gatlinburg area, but I've never been they, in Nashville. There is a really great restaurant in, it, well, it's not like in downtown Nashville, but I mean, it's in the Nashville area. It's called the Pancake Pantry and it's like a famous restaurant. They have some of the best good. pancakes and you can get oh. like, they have all different flavors of pancakes. They have, um, I think one of the ones we always get when we go are the Hawaiian pancakes or the like Caribbean pancakes. They are so good. Oh, wow. That does sound good. Like I... I'm all Bananas for time flavors. The only hard. thing is, I went to uh, IHOP one time, and I have always loved uh, blueberry pancakes and chip, chocolate chip pancakes. The only thing is, is that whenever you order that stuff, they always obviously pile a bunch of like uh, the blueberries and whipped cream and all that kind of stuff on top of the pancakes. For some reason, I did not like that. <laughs> They didn't taste very good. Like they did not taste the same with all of that on top of it. So I'm kind of leery of trying. I totally understand. Have you, got, that. Have you gotten uh, blueberry pancakes from Cracker Barrel? No, I have not. They're good. They're really good. I'll okay. try them. I love. There's Cracker not Barrel. really Cracker Barrel around us. Like I think the, like the like the nearest Cracker Barrel to us is like an hour away. Oh. So yeah. Well, whenever you make it to Georgia sometime, I'll take you to Cracker Barrel. Because okay. <laughs> yeah, I've got like deal. three within 30 minutes of me. So. <laughs> yeah, wow. I love Cracker Barrel. We used to have one. It's kind of like, like where do you want to go to lunch, Cracker Barrel? Which one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love Cracker Barrel. We used to have one like 20, 25 minutes away, but I think it closed because of COVID, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah sad yeah the next scene it cuts to Kaylee meeting with a client and she's telling them about a social media campaign pitch she put together and the good news is that the client really loved the uh sales pitch or the social media pitch for uh or that she had given her yeah we find out that Kaylee applied for a job in New York that her friend Dina told her about and this was when she was on the phone with her parents when she was when she had just met with the client 
Also, when she's on the phone with her parents, we find out that Kaylee has been taking care of the Cunningham's kids, uh, Rose and Lily, for years. And then later on, we find out that she helped raise them. I believe, uh, who was it? Was it Rose It was four when she started taking care of them? Or was it Lily? I can't remember which one. I honestly got mixed up on which one was the older one. They were like so close. I, I yeah. honestly was confused on that. But, you know, I, I wish we had more background on like when she started taking care of them because it says that she basically raised them, but we didn't really get much background there. No. I definitely would like to see like more background on that. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's the problem with a lot of homework movies. I love them, but I feel like there are times where they don't give us enough backstory. Yeah, yeah they don't. I would love to see more backstory. Yeah. I mean, I get it. You you can only film yeah. so much when you're on a set. Like, you, you're you only given so much money t- and so much time to, like, a window of time to get, like, the, a, a, a movie done. You don't just get unlimited time to film a movie. You kind of just, like, it's literally given to you, like, okay, you only had the, the, this many months to film this movie, and this is your budget. Well, and, it's, so and your time budget, like, as far yeah. as how long the movie itself can be. So, yeah. yeah, you have to, like, figure out what's the most important thing here. And Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, backstory t- tends to not be the most greatest, like, yeah. priority. Yeah, I agree. It's a bummer, but it's understandable at the same time. Yeah. Miles, he has a brother, Ethan, and he mentions to Kaylee that he is coming to spend the holidays with him and his wife, Margaret, the two brothers, they don't always see eye to eye on things and they have never agreed on anything ever since they were kids. So this is something else that he tells uh, Kaylee. When sounds like classic uh, siblings. Mm Yeah. Well, and Ethan kind of says that at some point during the movie, uh, like uh, sibling rivalry at its best or something about the girls, but like you could kind of sense that, in his voice of like this is what it was like between him and miles yeah yeah now was it just me or and i'm sorry like some particular details have uh slipped my mind but is it just me or did miles and margaret almost seem like they wanted ethan and callie to meet like Uh yeah and again, some some particular details have slipped my mind, so there may they may have actually. I feel like that. that's always the case, though. There's always yeah. someone yeah. in the group of Not friends that, want, that can see the potential, and they like laser target on it, and they're like, "Okay, I'm going to make sure this happens." Oh, yeah. yeah. And okay, yeah. what I gotta do? I'm going to make sure that these two get some alone time, and it's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's um, always like a matchmaker in the group somewhere. Yeah, yeah, Rose and Lily, they were doing a little bit of matchmaking too. Oh yeah. yeah Ethan, didn't Ethan actually call one of them all right, you little matchmaker? Like yeah. you know, when they were painting. Like, Never too young to be matchmakers. No. Yeah, that was Rose he uh, called out. Yeah. Or Rosie is what they called her. Rosie. Mm-hmm. Rosie and Lily's parents, so Miles and Margaret, they are going out of town for the night for a Christmas party in New York City. Wow, to be able to go to like a fancy party all the way in New York just for one night. I know. I know. Right? Was I the only one confused on where they lived? Yes. Like bit, how, yeah. it kind of it kind of made it like for them to just go to an event all the way in New York. But to have to plot, like I don't remember them actually yeah. saying where they lived. Yeah, exactly. I and I, heard, they, I think I heard and, it in DC at one point. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I okay. guess that could be a little. Okay. okay, that could be a little understandable, but at the same time, it's like. Oh yeah, it was. Um, it was for the uh the charity thing, the toy drive. Yeah, it mentioned something about DC. Okay, now that you, now that you said that, I remember that. But I had, I was like, it super still kind of made it seem like New York it. was like close, but yet too far. Mm-hmm. At yeah. the same time, yeah. so DC would be kind of considerable. Yeah. So yeah, maybe it was probably like a small town, maybe on the outside yeah. of DC, maybe. And they just said, Well, yeah, maybe so. Mm-hmm. so when uh when Ethan gets settled at the house, so Miles and Margaret's house, where uh them are uh, where they and their kids live, uh, and he's sitting at 
I believe his desk or something, you know, the desk in one of the rooms in the house. He gets an alert on his phone that there is a blizzard headed for New York City. Hey, can we, sorry, can we backtrack a little bit? I think we're missing a very important scene that was like my favorite from the movie. It's when Kai, when the two meet in the oh, store. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was like the first, the yeah, that was the first, yeah, that, that was the teaser. Right. Like, right. yeah. it's our yeah. I love that scene. It is gold. I did too, because like her face, like her hand, just like still right. sitting there after he just like yanks the paint set out of her hand. And she's just like looking at it with her hand still like outward. Like, mm-hmm. did that mm-hmm. really just happen? And then, and then when he shows up at the door and she opens the door and is like, yeah. <laughs> right? I love that. It's so. No, I'm sorry. I completely forgot. Like, I, I forgot to mention that part. No, no, you're good. I just, that, like, when I think of this movie, I always think of that scene. Yeah. And we were fighting over the fact of how it's better if, no, it's better if I give it to her. No, but I'm the uncle. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. when, when he's like, okay, I'm getting this for my niece. Are you getting this right. for your daughter? Because daughter tra- uh, Trump, daughter Trump's Trump's niece. like, no. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, my, she practically uh, could have Kara. said that they were her daughters because she practically raised them. So right. honestly, if it was me, I would have said, yeah, they're my daughters. Yeah. <laughs> like, <Right. laughs> it was, it yeah. was hilarious. When am I ever going to see you daughter. again? Oh, wait. 25 minutes later, she's at the door. Mm-hmm. Or he's at the door, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wrote that down for our favorite scenes. And then funniest moments, too. The yeah, that was definitely one of my favorite. Yeah, the scene when he gets to yeah. the door. That was like the like clip. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Classic. Definitely. Under funniest scenes, I have the one when he gets to the house and she opens the door and he said, or she says, toy snatcher. Or toy snatcher. And then he says, you? Am I at the wrong house or something? Yeah. I love how whenever like he's literally going up to his brother's house. And yeah. seeing her at the door makes him think, am I at the wrong house? Even though <laughs> in his brother's house that he's obviously been to more than once for him to know that his niece would like that specific toy. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. I find that kind of hilarious. I mean, I probably would do, I probably would too. Cause like, did that, like, I probably would question whether or not my brother would move and not tell me. Cause I feel like that would be something my brother would do. <laughs> Just to mess with me. So I get it at the same time because yeah. Right. I mean to be uh-huh. fair, he has been overseas for a while. So yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. This is true. We hear that Miles and Margaret's flights have been canceled for the next two days. And this is in the scene when Margaret and Kaylee are on the phone. I guess she's in the bedroom she's sleeping in. I guess the guest room, one of the guest rooms. And Margaret tells them, or tells Kaylee that they're stuck in New York, unfortunately. Are they going to be stuck in New York like in Home Alone too? I wrote that I down. Love that York. reference. It was hilarious. <laughs> I wrote that down. Nobody knows their classics. <laughs> I loved that moment, yeah. After Kaylee gets off the phone with Margaret, she gets an email that she got the job offer that she was... I guess hoping for, which is very. I remember funny. the look of like, shock yeah. on her face. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, much- I kind of wonder how it feels to like. I'm sure they. I mean, obviously they dress this, but um, like I couldn't imagine like being the person that kind of helped raise these kids and then yeah. leave for a different job after having this job for as long as she obviously has. Yeah. Like I don't know if I what I would be able what I would do or how I would feel. I don't even know if I would even go as far. Like obviously eventually she would have had to probably get another job obviously whenever the kids got out of school or got to a specific age. Like no teenager needs an au pair. So I get that. But still I'd be like kind of I don't know feeling all kinds of emotions trying to do a different job that's not being those kids au pair. I would too. Yeah. I feel like it'd be really hard to leave those kids. Yeah, I mean, because you're practically like their parent, too. Like, they pretty much are your kids, too, because you spend all day, every day with them, taking Mm -hmm. care of them while their parents do their jobs, and yeah. Ethan, he runs a multi-million dollar corporation, and he lives in London, so he came 
we find out later in the movie that he came from uh, London for uh, all the way to, I guess, Washington to spend time with his nieces. I've always wanted to go to London. Me too. Like, everyone kind of says, like, everyone, uh, but I get so many mixed, like, mixed emotions from people about London because some people say it's dreary and just, like, not at all what people try and advertise it as. And then some people say it's absolutely everything they, they advertise. And I'm like, which one is it? I know. Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't want to waste money going on a plane and going all the way to London only to, like, get just completely, like, yeah. Yeah. Girls trip. Let's go find out. <laughs> hey, I'm all game for at least trying to go and see because like just like, you know, London is just one of those cities that you just always want to see. You know, it's just always going to be on somebody's bucket list. Yeah. 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 And like, someone it, who grew, grew up wanting to go to London and England so bad when I actually did get the opportunity to go there, I was actually surprised that I did not enjoy London as much as I thought I would. Well, for one thing, Big Ben was shut down. Like they were oh, literally, no. oh, yeah. it. it's like I could literally see it, and I was like, "Wow, this is not what I was expecting." Because when you think of London, you think of Big Big Ben. Right. No, you think of Big Ben. You think of the uh, you think of the uh, bridge. You think of yeah. the London Eye. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, so yeah, it like in my experience, it definitely wasn't what I thought it would be. But England itself is gorgeous, like the countryside and everything. It's just so pretty. Definitely. Oh yeah, I would. I know that's really crazy, but I've always wanted to kind of do like the outskirts, like the kind of like small towns of England, because like I like just looking at them, like you know, I've even looked at act, look up looked up actors. Like one of my favorite actors is British. He's Tom Holland. He plays Spider Man. He like the town he grew up in is beautiful. It really is, and it's a small little tiny little town in, in um, right outside of London. But it's still really pretty. Yeah. And it's like, good. I would love to just kind of stroll down the sidewalk of like a yeah. really small little English town and oh, just, yeah. you know, yeah. level lavish in that. So. Definitely a unique experience for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that would be so much fun. We hear that Ethan doesn't have a lot of experience with kids because he's always busy with work. And I believe he tells Kaylee, Kaylee this. Uh, I think it was in the scene after... He almost burned the house down with the pancakes. <laughs> what uh, as someone who, <laughs> as someone who literally caught my stove on fire trying to make eggs, it's not necessarily something that's impossible to do. <sighs> like a lot of people look at that and they're like, "Oh my gosh, anything for some cinematic like flair." No, it is possible to catch your house on fire by trying to cook breakfast. I've done it. Just like oh that. goodness. Just watch how much grace you use whenever you're trying to cook the eggs. Yeah. <laughs> I learned that mistake the hard way. <laughs> One of the next scenes, we see Ethan is working on his computer and he gets a message from a woman named Patricia asking if they could talk. So I wrote in my notes, who is, Pat- who is Pat- Patricia? What were your thoughts on, uh, like, who did y'all think Patricia? Pat- Pat- Patricia was. Patricia. <laughs> Let's just call her Patty. Let's just call her Patty. Um, um, I thought she was a like boss or a co worker or something because he kept talking about work. Like he kept talking about um, that now that he's gone, everybody at work suddenly seems to need his opinion on everything or whatever. So my assumption was maybe that it was his boss or something. Honestly. Because of it being a Hallmark movie, my mind straightly went to like an X or something like that. Only because it's Hallmark. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Like a Hallmark like, style. Like Up in Family is pretty much Hallmark. So. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it could have gone either way. I mean, I could definitely tell that he like didn't really want her to see that Patricia was texting him or calling him. So like yeah. I kind of kind of assumed it was an ex or something like that but also it could have been like a business partner as well so yeah yeah because I feel like that would have been a really cool like cliff like a little twist of things mm-hmm. like make us think that it's like an ex but really she's just like a co-worker trying to get a hold of him yeah I feel like that would have been I'm trying to write, doesn't it Morgan <laughs> just saying yeah uh, like you said it's kind of the hallmark formula so I thought it was I immediately thought it was an ex 
Yeah, it's just like the way that he was acting around yeah. the text calls and the way that he was like dodging them and everything. Like, yeah. if he was a coworker, he would have just answered it. He was yeah. answering all the other coworkers' calls, so why know. was he not saying this ones? Yeah, so I was That's like, there. Yeah, I was like, there. Yeah, she's definitely like something. Mm-hmm. Whether it's an ex or maybe he knew that she had feelings for him and he didn't like her back and like he, you know how guys are, they would rather yeah. dodge you and like ghost you than just actually just tell you like Person. straight up like, hey, I don't have feelings. For you. Leave me alone. So yeah. yeah, I will say that I did not expect her to be who she was, though. I will just say that. Yeah, I didn't really see that part coming. Uh uh-uh. uh Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah, which was nice, like to actually get kind of like a. That's true. Stalker. Like I kind of get a moment where you were like, okay, I did not see that coming. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. One of the next scenes is, I believe, maybe the uh, following morning. And Kaylee is, I guess, doing something, maybe, you know, planning all the Christmas activities. And she's telling Ethan about them going Christmas tree shopping. And he asks, you know, why don't you already have the tree up? And Kaylee says that Rose and Lily have grown accustomed to getting the Christmas tree up and the house decorated a week before Christmas. I would not that's, that's, <laughs> Okay, can I say that that's very out of character for children? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. whenever I was growing up, it couldn't come fast enough. I know, like, yeah. I was wanting to do it, like, on Halloween night. Like, how the night of Halloween, like, I don't celebrate Halloween, so, like, at an early age, we never really did like dress we we didn't go trick-or-treating i think we did it like maybe one or two years and then like we never did it again so like on halloween night me and my family most of the time if it wasn't halloween it was thanksgiving we would put the tree at least up at least the tree and i i've even sent pictures to uh to carrie but my like we go all out for christmas we've got like the little christmas fillers that we put up and put together we put lights like uh, you know we finally actually have a, a house now now that i've moved where we could actually decorate the outside of the house and we're like so excited to be able to do that so that that kind of shocked me that these little kids want don't want to decorate the house until a week before christmas i was like that was that was crazy that's so late yeah it is i think the only reason is it it kind of gathered to me that miles pretty much this is their christmas break like pretty much he Uh, takes off of work whatever everything is dropped everything is about them and the kids so this has become this tradition like this christmas list have your list ready so when we get back from this party we're going to do all these things so i think that's the only reason that that's okay with the kids otherwise i think it would be um more of a big deal but um yeah i i yeah that that does make it a lot a lot a lot more sense yeah but still like i just you know yeah, it's still unusual. Yeah. Yeah. When Ethan and Kaylee are Christmas tree shopping with uh, Rose and, or Rosie and Lily, Ethan and Kaylee, they're having a conversation. And I can't remember what the question was, but uh, I think it was something about, you know, being in competition with each other or something. Mm-hmm. And Ethan tells Kaylee that. He and his brother Miles, they were very competitive growing up and they competed in literally everything. I think one of the things he mentioned was even chores. Yeah. I think one thing that kind of struck me as interesting um, earlier when we were talking about uh, kind of wishing we had more backstory Mm -hmm. um, that I don't really feel like I got a full understanding of what the quote unquote rift was between the brothers like I they basically just that they didn't get along and then you don't really see them necessarily reconcile like there's no mm-hmm. hey I'm sorry I wasn't there for you like I should have been you know I was jealous of you growing up dad always thought you were the greatest are you kidding I thought you you know he thought you were the great you know like there was no conversation like that between them it was just like suddenly everything's okay mm-hmm. and so I felt like that was a slight um a storyline that fell through the cracks there personally for well, me yeah, yeah i agree yeah. yeah i mean looking at it like like an actual storyline or like 
that falls through the cracks because obviously it's a movie so you kind of have to see it that way but in reality i feel like that's just how men are this is true like i have a brother and (laughs) i've seen the way that he is about like how he was with like whenever him and one of his friends got into like a disagreement or something like they would never like my brother never got like it was never like fist fights or anything like that it was always just like disagreements like verbal disagreements mm-hmm. like they would la- last literally probably a day or two and then they like the, the his friend who he assumed was like like they he never made a big deal up out of it most of the time i never even heard anything about him having like problems with this person and the next thing you knew they were back at our house like as if nothing happened so I feel like that's um, like it's a storyline that fell through the cracks, but at the same time, I feel like it's kind of fitting because that's just how men are. That's like, true. I feel like with I feel um, like with women, we have a tendency to have to get everything out in the open and whatever. Like, yeah. okay, if the, this has been bothering me, we need to talk about this so I yeah. can get it off my chest, you know, get it out of my head. And with men, they're just like, eh, mm. whatever, and they move on. Yeah, exactly. So you're you're right. You're right. Yeah, I mean, they just don't like. I'm not saying this is for all guys. I'm not automatically just bunching all the dudes up together. Just like we don't like to be bunched up as the all women. But yeah, I mean, most of the time guys will do whatever they have to do to stay clear of drama and all that. That's why you tend to see some girls hang around guys more than like me personally. I hung around guys more than I hung around girls because of that simple fact. Mm -hmm. Like I could not stand to like be in constant drama and constantly having to stress out about whether or not this person likes me or not and with guys i never had to worry about that Mm -hmm. so yeah and that same scene i believe ethan asks her a question about her job like you know why she decided to uh nanny or be an au pair and she said that she fell into the job after college as a way to explore the world and meet new people she went to school for marketing and she still does social media work on the side now i have kind of a maybe off the beaten path uh question here nicole with her um doing with kaylee being um like uh media marketing whatever did you feel any similarities to her with your graphic design background i guess or a little bit. I mean, not too much, but I didn't take a lot of marketing classes in college, but I would say maybe like the design aspect, like I think she was mm-hmm. you know, some project she was working on that she had to design something, uh, maybe mm-hmm. like a spreadsheet or I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was or like maybe an infographic or something. So yes. And that is, um, I can relate in that way. Yeah. With, like the design aspect, mm-hmm. which was kind of cool. I like oh, yeah. the career she had. I thought that was awesome. Mm-hmm. One of the next scenes, we hear that Ethan and his girlfriend broke up. Uh, they've known each other about five years and dated for three. Her name is Patricia. And Ethan says that it was more of a mutual comfort than an actual relationship. What do y'all think he meant by mutual comfort? I feel like with some people... They don't like putting labels on things nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like people, I've noticed in this generation, no, like it's, and I hate it because I'm definitely old school. So me and Carrie will agree when it comes to, okay, Hannah, you you agree. But like (laughs) me and Carrie have talked about like, like how frustrating it is to date in this day and age, because like, you don't know if you're like just talking or if that person has other people that they're talking to because you just don't verbalize it like the communicate like people's uh, communication skills have plummeted in this coming like this generation like nobody talks in this day of activity we are extremely disconnected (laughs) yes exactly it's it's crazy how much how much contact we have with with social media but yet we don't use it yeah like i like i'm just a straight i'm just a straight shooter Like, if I like you, I want to date you, I'm going to make sure that you know it. In this world of, uh, in this world of texting and tweeting. (laughs) Yeah, like, right and with all the ways that you can communicate with a person, like, FaceTime and, like, 
you know, all these situations. It's like, it's crazy how hard it is for people to just straight up say, hey, I like you. Do you want to be my girlfriend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. And yet it's like everybody gets tongue-tied and like awkward and like, you don't do that. Mm -mm. It's a no-no. That doesn't exist anymore. Like, we just don't do that. Like, did like it almost makes me feel old. <laughs> like it almost makes you feel like you're like the way that people react to you. Like if I was to go to like a high school and demonstrate that out to kids, they would be like, "Did you just come back from like the 1900s? Like what's going on?" <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and like it, it, I mean, for crying out loud, I'm going to be 25 on the 23rd of this month. Okay, I'm not that old. No. But people who are literally the same age as me almost have the same way of thinking as a lot of these teenagers are today. And it freaks me out because it's like, oh, my God. Oh, if there is one thing I hate, it is being called a millennial. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Because I'm like, do not group me in with that bunch of idiots. (laughs) Right? Because I was born, I was, all, I, if you take five minutes to talk to me, you will know. I always used to crack up, uh, like in Goodwill. I used to go to Goodwill all the time and shop for movies. And uh, there would be an older person standing there uh, looking through the movies. And uh, I would strike up a conversation with them. And when I would first walk up, you can kind of see this look of disgust, like, oh, another one of those on their face. And then they would have a movie in their hand or something. And I would comment on it because I would know the movie and they would look at me a little surprised. Like, how do you know that, you know, whatever. And then I would just keep talking to them. And by the time they they walked off, they would have this look on their face. Like maybe there is some hope for the younger generation, but I'm like, it does not take very long of talking to me to realize I am not your typical millennial. And I'm just like, Yeah. yeah. I'm the same way, like, I'm a millennial in some ways, but in some ways, I'm not at all. Yeah, like, I was, I was born in 96, and I can't be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I was told that 90, people who are born in 96 uh, tend to be, like, the, they, like, they either come out very much a millennial, or they're very much a Gen Z. I think that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, that's the next one, yeah. And I'm, like, and so like you're, there, you're kind of in the middle and you kind of just like you you kind of just your personality speaks for you or whatever mm-hmm. or the way you like the way your parents raised will tell you whether yeah. or not you're a gender or a millennial. Oh, I honestly hate the whole generational names. I honestly wish that people <laughs> would just be like, hi, I'm a human being. Oh, yeah. this is how I am. <laughs> that was a, so, uh, my mom had music playing the other day and there was an ad came on that had like something from the 80s. In it, well, of course, you know, she grew up during the 80s, so she was laughing over it, and I just gave her this side eye, and she started cracking up, and I'm like, I am not an 80s child. Like, stuff from the 80s is so stupid. Like, it is so stupid. I hate it. Like, (laughs) And I am very much grew up on 80s music, so that makes me die laughing right now, because (laughs) I, what's so funny is that I grew up on parents who were, like, listening to all types, like, I'm like very much of a christian like sheltered life i grew up in but at the same time my parent my dad wasn't in church um he believed in god obviously and everything but but as far as actually going to church and stuff like that he he wasn't really part of that part of it so on one hand i'd be in the car listening to gospel music with my mom and next thing you know i'd be in the car with my dad he's like jamming out to like Def Leppard journey and like like the 80s rock bands so I'm very much a very mixture of all kinds of different things but then I get Carrie over here talking to me about like Gene Kelly and you know all of these yeah Ben Crosby and like but one thing me and her can kind of agree on is like Frank Sinatra oh I love Frank Sinatra love us some like me and her love us some Frank Sinatra so, For whatever reason, my current song that I'm obsessed with um, is Dean Martin singing uh, On an Evening in Roma. I know that, Ooh. yeah. I know that song. That was actually in um, the Lizzie McGuire movie. Yeah, it was. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> to, anyone, to anyone listening, I am the one out of the four here who has never watched the Lizzie McGuire movies. What? <laughs> 
What? Okay, you've got to not lying. Guys, y'all, she has she has watched obviously some movies and stuff outside of like the like I think you said that you cut off after the 50s, right? 60s. Or before. 60s. Okay. So she's cut, she cuts off at 60s. So anything that happened before the 60s, she doesn't know anything about unless it's Hallmark. No, no, after, after the 60s. Oh, after the 60s. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, like, I like watch stuff from the to me, the 30s to 50s is like the golden age of Hollywood. Yeah. And I love it. Like that is where I thrive. That is my passion. Like I've been listening to playlist in my car that is literally dean martin frank sinatra bing crosby the andrews sisters all these people from that time period and i'm like if anybody was riding in my car with me they would be so bored right now but i'm over here like insanely happy i would (laughs) i would not i wouldn't be bored when i was in high school i wouldn't be bored either like i kind of what's really funny is that like i love um Especially around this time of year, like Michael Bublé is like always yeah. on my mm-hmm. on my playlist, and he is very much like the big band type music. Yeah. He's me, he's me, probably me, like the new is era, kind of a combination of Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, and Dean Martin. Yeah, he's yeah. pretty much like the this generation's yeah. Frank Sinatra and Brent, and Bing Crosby and Gene Kelly. Know. He's like, yeah. yeah. So that's the like that that's who made me fall in love with Frank Sinatra is Michael Bublé, but uh care i'm gonna get really off topic but you know i think that's you guys kind of just signed up for that when you guys asked us to join <laughs> really okay. like a while ago we were talking about england and i said that one of my favorite actors uh tom holland well he just uh said in an interview that he's going to be playing fred astaire in his auto pick wow that's right awesome. And he's got a dance background. He used to play, he used to do tap and all of that whenever he was younger. He played Billy Elliot on Broadway, I want to say, or in theater whenever he was mm-hmm. really young. That's how he started out acting. And when mm-hmm. I heard that, I'm like, finally a movie that me and Carrie will like be able to watch <laughs> and not be able to take our eyes off. Cause I'll be watching Tom Holland just in awe of him. And she'll be watching it because it's Fred Astaire. <laughs> Yeah, I love Fred Astaire. I literally just found out the other day that Fred Astaire had an autobiography, and I didn't know that. I didn't, like, I didn't, like, I had no clue who Fred Astaire was, so I literally, because of Tom Holland, I looked him up, and I was like, okay, I do know who he is, first of all. Like, it took me a second. I've like, had, had several people ask me, like, uh, with our podcast, if we would want to cover some of these old movies and stuff, because a lot of people love them, the old movies and TV shows. I was like, yeah, I think I need to start a separate podcast for that because Morgan does not get into that stuff. I like, don't, I like, it, like it, but I think it just kind of attests to like how your parents are. Like you get your tastes in music and movies and stuff from your parents. Well, partially, that's yeah, how I believe. But like I was, like I grew up on the Andy Griffith Show. We haven't had TV service since I was little, but I grew up on the Andy Griffith Show, Little House on the Prairie and that's about the size of it like this was pretty much what we watched but I was oh I loved the sound of music that was my favorite movie growing up I had to get it every time we went to the library it drove my brother crazy because I would go around singing the song honestly I love that movie like Julia Andrews is incredible she is I I love her like I I I, no lie like I watched the princess diaries movies way too much because for those are cute like, i have seen those y'all can be proud of me i have seen those Woo! Um, <laughs> i love that i just got a round of applause for that um but i was 15 years old i'm saying i do and don't agree with you that it's uh your parents shaping you because i was 15 years old when i saw white christmas for the first time and i fell in love with classics from that movie so i was like well on my way like 15 years old you're well on your way to being able to develop your own tastes and stuff and actually like my mom doesn't really listen to I I listen to more of the 50s music than she does she pretty much just listens to gospel so like I listen to more of that and my dad if I I was getting tickled you talking about getting in the car with your dad because I'm like yeah that sounds pretty much like my dad except instead of it being rock music it was country music so I would have been listening to um Hank Williams Jr. or something like that like you Merle know? Haggard and yeah, yeah and like yeah. Willie Nelson and yeah like yeah. see what's really crazy is that 
I I do agree at some point you do kind of cut off from being like more of like the mixture of your parents and you start Mm -hmm. kind of developing your own taste as you get into your teenage years because I um during school I met one of my cousins I had never met before and her family like has cattle and all that kind of stuff I've never been around any of that in my life and I fell in love with it like yeah. it, I fell in love with country music. I fell in love with, you know, it started like dreaming about like going and having my own like farm one day. So you you do get influenced by other people very easily. But yeah, um, I've watched older movies, like obviously like The Sound of Music. I've watched White Christmas because it recently came on Netflix and I loved I've it. I've never seen it. I need to watch it. It's on Netflix. Oh my gosh, you've got to watch it. It's on Netflix and it's really good. I've never um, seen it. Uh... My mind is liking the other one that's really popular. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Yes, that one. I've never seen that one either. Carrie hates that movie. I don't hate it. It's just you not do my hate it. favorite. It's just not my favorite, which is surprising because Jimmy Stewart. I've never watched it. Jimmy Stewart is uh, like no my love. Like I love James Stewart. He is like tops when for me. So. It is actually surprising to me that It's a Wonderful Life isn't my favorite movie. It's actually a really good movie. There are just a couple of scenes in it that creep me out. And I wonder if it's because our VHS is kind of a sepia color. So I wonder if I saw it just in black and white or color, if it would not seem quite as creepy. It might be, yeah. That might be why. Yeah, it probably is. You might have to go and see if you can buy it online and watch it like on your phone. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's on Amazon Prime, I think. Probably. Probably. Knowing me, I would just get the DVD. (laughs) That too. But I actually love it because I love the stories where, like, I love the the story of the movie and even the behind the scenes of the movie and stuff. I love. Um, Because, like, James Stewart actually, a lot of his emotion that you see in that movie was real because he was going through PTSD from the war. So yeah. that movie was actually therapy for him, like in yeah. a lot of ways. His emotion was real because of That's that. Crazy. Um, so there was, uh, there's a lot of cool behind the scenes uh, to that movie for me. But like I said, there's just a couple of scenes that kind of creep me out, <laughs> that kind of ruined the whole movie for me. Um, how did we even end up off on all this? I had, this is see this is the this is the. <laughs> This is the black hole that is me and Carrie. Okay, everywhere we go, we like literally get everything off topic and all twisty turvy, and we have no clue how we can get up here. So another thing is like I I have watched older movies. Like uh, I love like my grandma had a VHS tape of uh Elvis Presley's Blue Lagoon. Mm. Guys, I played that thing like way too much. Like I loved Elvis's movies. I don't think I've seen Elvis movies. Yeah. But I do like his music. Like, yeah. I've only seen a I've only seen a handful of his movies. I haven't seen as many of them as I want it. I want to. Like I'm still working on that. Yeah. But um, I think he definitely is. A, he's definitely better at singing than he is acting. Like if, if I remember, like I've seen clips of his old movies, like on YouTube and stuff. Whenever I've just scrolled down the deep black hole of YouTube, you know, you kind yeah. of start watching the weird. You, you 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 start watching out like certain new what, videos. What was the movie that he them. did? Um, Jailhouse Rock in. It was oh, black shit. and white. I can't I can't for the life of me think of the name of that movie, but I have seen it, and I'm ter- I'm sorry, but he is terrible at lip syncing. He really in is that particular movie. Yeah. Like he was so focused. Whenever on I was younger, dancing. whenever I was younger, like Elvis could do no wrong. <laughs> but now that I'm older, knowing things like lip singing and like the, the behind yeah. the scenes stuff, I'm like, oh my god, why did I like this so much? What's, what's oh, funny wow. is I have I was not actually an Elvis fan until I was probably like late teens, something like that. Because the only songs I had ever heard by him was like Blue Suede Shoes or something like that. And I'm like, it's just stupid. Like it's just stupid. <laughs> like I didn't like it. That was the only songs I'd ever heard by him. Now I love that song, but um, um you you said it was stupid, and now you hate that you love it. I don't know. It's just fun now. At the time, it felt stupid. Um, I will have. I will. I don't care if I. It's literally just like someone playing the song on piano. But I will have. Can't help falling in love in my wedding. I love, somehow, I love that somehow. song. I I love this uh this this American Idol 
contestant saying I think I song. know who you're talking about. Yeah, she sang like I never yeah, Han, like Haley or Hannah. No, oh, or sorry. Gina. There's two people that sang it. Uh, Gina Irene and then Haley Reinhardt. I love Haley Reinhardt's cover. Yeah, it's a it's, uh, Haley Reinhardt. Yeah. Her version is amazing. I love it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if I were, I probably wouldn't use Elvis's version. I probably would use hers. The song that hooked me on Elvis, a friend of mine was like shocked that I was not an Elvis fan. He's like, with as much of a classics lover as you are, how can you not yeah. like Elvis? You know, and he was like, look up. Um, oh shoot, what is the name of the song? I had it in my brain a second ago. Um, let it be let me, me tender. Let it be me. Oh, okay. I don't know if I've ever heard and that. He, he was like, look that up, and I was bawling. It like, is it was good. so it's- sweet. I so that then, one I've, I've never heard that one it's not one of his most popular ones like you're not gonna find it on like his greatest hits that's probably yeah. why um i know because i was i grew up around elvis like pretty much like my aunt especially loved mm-hmm. elvis too so i grew up a lot like listening to it with her um it's not like his greatest hit kind of song which i think is a bummer because it's probably one of his best ones that i love too i'll have to um, check it out but like my oh, favorites were like love me tender yeah. Uh, can't help falling in love. And then, of course, I loved some more, more of his rocker style, like, you know, Joe Haas rock and things yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I think what actually introduced me to Elvis was John Stamos on Full House. Yes. <laughs> I love so, <laughs> Oh my God. He, yeah. he was like, I think that was also why I loved John Stamos so much. You know, I had like a huge crush whenever I was younger over John Stamos because he was like my own Elvis oh, that I, I loved it. I loved but, like, them, singing, them singing to Michelle every night. Like the, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, let, well, yeah, baby, let me be your teddy bear. Yeah. yeah. I think I remember watching that episode. Have mercy. While, while we're on music, the one of the disappointing things that I had with this movie, um, that we have gotten way off track from talking about. Good way of being able to swing it back around to the movie, Carrie. <laughs> Thank you. But one of the disappointments that I had was that we didn't hear Kayla sing because Kayla is a great singer. Yeah. She's beautiful. She is. She's amazing. I was so surprised about that. Like she, like nothing. Like yeah. Jeremy but it maybe I mean yeah Jeremy sang just a little bit but it was like you would have thought they would have at least let him do a duet yeah. I know yeah. where you actually heard or even with them just like talking. maybe have like they could have made it so like domestic mm-hmm. by like just like having them have some Christmas like Christmas music playing in the background like really softly and then like mm-hmm. then like singing along to it while they're making breakfast for the kids or making yeah. cookies or, or like, yeah. whatever they could have made it so easily into this movie and they didn't which was really much of a pretty much of a bummer yeah, the one the one other thing, um, somewhat along those lines, was what was her favorite Christmas movie? Because I, I couldn't tell what it was on the screen. Like I knew it was black and white, but like she said that they would round out the evening by watching her um, favorite Christmas movie. And this was actually, honestly, one of my favorite scenes, or one yeah. of my favorite parts of the movie was I thought it was so sweet that they put the girls to bed, and then he's like so you up for that movie and she was like yeah. you remember it you know and he's like yeah. of course like this is something you wanted to do let's do it you know I just thought that was so sweet because that for me um never technically been in a relationship very very strict uh technicality there that I've never been in a relationship um but that I know that's one thing that for me showed that this person really cared about me was when they remembered details and when they just wanted to make me happy yeah yeah Yeah, I I agree even if it's just simply like I um one thing that my mom would always do for us Mm -hmm. is like if she went to the store even just to get gas she would always pick out our favorite candy and bring Mm -hmm. it out to us in Mm -hmm. the car we wouldn't even ask her for the candy we would never even say anything not that we think that she would just automatically say no or whatever we just didn't really think about it most of the time Mm-hmm. But she would go and get our favorite candy. Mm-hmm. So just like those simple things, which she's my, she's our, your mom. So obviously your mom's going to remember things like that. But if I'm mm-hmm. telling you, like, I don't know, I'll find, I will know I found the one if that guy like goes to the gas station and gets my favorite candy and brings it out to me. That's right, when I know any, I found the one. Any guys listening to this podcast that want no, to no, remember no. that. 
And while we're on the topic, I think the sweetest part of this whole movie was when Jeremy's character went and called Kaylee's parents. Yeah, I was yes. actually that just that, melted my heart. That yes. was that I was, was like actually about to get to that in my notes. So sweet. Yeah. Now I well, thought it was really, really uh funny. Like this this struck me as like odd, funny sweet whatever could t- uh could be awkward when her mother facetimed her and was asking her about ethan and right. he's like saying he's you know he's sweet and whatever and then her mother's like yeah he said he's really sweet from what i can tell and she's like what do you mean from what you can tell you've never met him and she was like why don't you come downstairs and find out and it's like he's standing right there like he's really hearing her say how sweet he is and it's like <laughs> um that could be awkward you know I would have been embarrassed (laughs) I I would be very upset with my mother (laughs) like you couldn't go to the bathroom away from him or something or go outside right and she's like like, you had to FaceTime him with like like, right there yeah they had this conversation you open the can of worms if you open the can of worms with this conversation had me saying how sweet he was and you're gonna stand right there with him on FaceTime Mm-hmm. oh gosh betrayal betrayal <laughs> oh gosh I, the I will ultimate say her, I will betrayal. Say her mother was not a typical hallmark mother i, I yeah. did like yeah. that actually yeah yeah i like that too i like whenever they kind of put like fun parents mm-hmm. you know like but yeah. not like like not like but actually like fun parents not like the quirky right weird, realistic right. But fun. realistic yeah, yeah. Yeah, realistic is a very good word for it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is totally something my parents would do, honestly. Yeah, same here. <laughs> no, my mom would literally say, he's cute right there with him right next to her. Yeah. <laughs> Just to embarrass me. And make my cheeks go red. So. See, my problem is I get flustered even if I don't like somebody. Like, I have literally disliked somebody and somebody teased me about them and I will get flustered like I have a crush on them like I there is no legit way to know if I actually have a crush on somebody or not because I get flustered regardless (laughs) (laughs) yep I get that one of the next scenes I think this is later that day after Kaylee's parents had gotten there and I can't remember what they were doing but Kaylee's mother I guess was talking to uh, Ethan and he was or she was uh, offering for her and I guess Kaylee's dad to watch the kids while they you know take a uh, mm-hmm. while Ethan and Kaylee take a break so this is the scene when we finally see Ethan ask Kaylee out on a date which mm-hmm. I loved I, I loved the date scene that was really sweet oh, the yeah. date or the walk that they had it took a little mm-hmm. walk down the street. I actually, I actually loved how simple it was. Like it didn't yeah. seem like it was meant to be a romantic date, although it was obviously a date. Like he yeah. says, "Will you go out with me tonight?" That's a pretty clear yeah. indication of a date. Um, but I loved that. Like even once they got back to the house, there was no attempt on either one of their parts uh for a kiss or anything like that like nothing was forced it was literally just them spending time together Mm -hmm. acknowledging the fact that they're attracted to each other like he's holding her hand or you know she's holding his arm or something like that but it just seemed so natural so unforced and just here's where we are let's see where this goes It, it it just felt very natural to me that's how it should be I think yeah, I, I agree. Like, I, I'm like, I've talked about this with Carrie and I've talked about it with some of my friends. Like, you know, back when my mom and dad and different ones, like back in those generations, like, you're, you didn't really go on like grand dates. Like, you're, you're like, even today, grand dates for like prom or homecoming yeah. or something like that. That was like your get dressed up all fancy and go out. Like, dates for, like dates around here in a small town where there's not a whole lot of like places to go that things to do most of the time people would literally just like go have 
food, like go get food at a local restaurant, maybe go hit up the movie theater if they've got something good playing that's even worth watching, and then maybe drive around listening to music and just talking. Mm -hmm. That was the kind of dates that we kind of have around here. See, my parents hardly ever uh went on actual dates like pretty much their dating in high school was my mom would go over to my dad's house and they would go squirrel hunting or they would go ride three wheelers or something like that like that was literally their relationship yeah so was, there was very few going to the movies or going out to eat or what it, like very very few things like that pretty much they just hung out so. Yeah, like, yeah, same with my mom. Like, she talked about how, like, you know, you would just go to each other's houses and spend time with each other, like, just whether it be, like, well, like just sitting on the couch talking or even just kind of, like, commuting with the family that was there, like, hanging out with his parents or him hanging out with their parents or whichever, whichever one. A lot of times it was just riding around listening to music and talking. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody would get together. They'd all pile up in one car and they would just ride around listening to music and talking and hanging out with yeah. each other. Yeah. And back then, back in the times that my mom and them were living, like they had a, um, it was called the lighthouse where you can go and like, if you're old enough, you can go and like just dance. And like, I like, and she, my mom loved roller skating. So that was another thing that people would love to do. They would all go to the roller skating rink and, and skate. And my mom could dance skate. Now you look on like movies and stuff and you see people who are like dancing while skating. My mom could do that. My mom can like skate backwards. Oh wow! So like, you know, when I hear my mom talking about how like her and her boyfriends, like her and her high school sweetheart at the time, who was not my dad, just clarifying, they would like you know dance and go skating together and stuff. And I could just imagining it like how it is in the movies. Yeah. So well, I mean, that kind of leads into the uh, ice skating. Yeah. In this movie, and let me just say, Ethan is me. Yeah, like, yes. I, I have been asking yeah. once. I never fell, actually. So but I, I fell once. I, I, also I never really, really left the wall. Same. Yeah. Same. Because I am a complete klutz. Same. I fall over standing still. Same. Like, okay, I uh, told um, Morgan the other night I had to, uh, when I was putting the Christmas lights on our tree, that did not go without incident. <laughs> Because somehow or another, I was walking around the tree and my feet just completely came out from under me and I fall on a pile of lots in the floor <laughs> right in front of my parents. Oh my so, God. At least they checked on me before they started making fun of me. They didn't make fun of me and then check on me. They checked on me before they made fun of me. But I'm like, what just happened here? Like I was minding my own business, putting lights on a tree, and all of a sudden I have no feet under me and I'm on the floor. So my ice skating story, me, like the one time I only ever went ice skating, I did it with my youth group. Mm -hmm. I had a massive crush on one of the guys in my youth group. I stayed at the wall. No way was I going to give myself an embarrassing moment in front of my in front of my crush. Okay. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm sticking to the wall. I don't care. <laughs> so but at one point they were kind of asking everybody to get off because they were gonna uh they were gonna bring the uh thing out to kind of smooth the ice because it was starting right. to get too rough and everybody was kind of starting to fall because the ice was getting too uh scraped up zamboni i think it's called zamboni isn't it yeah. i don't know anyways yeah. Yeah. um and so i kind of had to cut across because i wasn't on the side where the door was i fall right in front of him on my face and he and to make it kind of worse he helps me get up but you guys know it's not easy to help somebody else up <laughs> on the ice on the ice yeah so like i almost trample him over with me <laughs> and how he has my hands is like our hand our our our, our, our hand like he's on this he's beside me he's not like in front of me mm -hmm. so he's got my hand and like our fingers are like intertwined and inside i'm like dying freaking out yeah freaking out over all of it so yeah i don't have very fun memories of ice skating <laughs> i do but i don't it's yeah. been a long time since i've been ice skating i think i would love to try it again like i'm not afraid to try again yeah 
but I would probably much rather go roller skating than I think the uh, last time I can't remember how old I was but the last time I went ice skating I was a little girl and I used one of those walker things mm. <laughs> instead oh, yeah. of sticking to the wall <laughs> like hey, I just- at least you're brave enough to do that yeah I mean the one time okay I have been roller ska- uh sorry I've been roller skating twice I think and I have been um ice skating once and the one time I went ice skating I did leave the wall because like the group I was with was like in the center of the ice saying they're talking so I did leave the wall to like go over to them but then I didn't know how to stop myself so I like just grabbed uh my friend that I was with her I don't think they were married yet I don't remember if it was her sister's fiance or um, husband at that point. I don't remember if they were married or not. It's irrelevant to the story, but he was like right in front of me. So I like just grabbed his arm <laughs> to stop myself. And I'm like swinging around and he's looking at me like, you're weird. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm like, oh, God, I don't know how to stop myself. Okay. This is a lot better than landed on my face. <laughs> so... <laughs> Like, which one would you rather me do? Hang on to you or knock you down? For real, though. No. <laughs> like, because either one's about to happen right now. Which one? Take your pick. <laughs> oh, word. Oh, goodness. The girl thought it was funny. He was just looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, sorry, you were handy, okay? I grabbed something. <laughs> I think that's kind of what Ethan said. Like, he was, like, right on the ground on the ice and Kaylee was taking pictures and he was like what are you doing (laughs) yeah but like why do I see that actually happen between Kayla and Kevin for real either way like whether it's Kevin on the ground or Kayla on the ground one of them is taking the picture and the fact that before Ethan got on the ice, he's like, okay, no laughing at Uncle Ethan. No promises. Well, then he gets on the ground and she's like standing there dying laughing, taking pictures. And then like offers to help him up and then starts taking more pictures and whatever. And it's just like, you could totally see that being Kevin and Kayla. Mm-hmm. Like you could 100% see that being them. And I'm going to delete those. You better delete those pictures. I am not deleting those pictures. Like... <laughs> No, Kevin wouldn't even care. I, I don't think Kevin or Kayla would either one want the other to, t- to remove the pictures. They'd be like, let me see them. Like, yeah, let me probably, see how stupid probably. I look. Yeah. And then probably we post them on their own Instagrams making fun of themselves. That's true. That is true. So, like, they are so sticky cute. Yeah, they're great. So back to the movie, the scene when they're taking their walk and they're, you know, on their date, uh, Kayla tells... Ethan, that the job that she applied for in New York is at a smaller firm as their social media marketer. And she hasn't decided if she wants to take the job because, of course, she doesn't want to leave Rose or Rosie and uh, Lily behind. And she thinks, of, especially because she thinks of them as family. Ethan tells Kaylee that he uh, never knew if he was meant for business. It was his father's idea that he followed into. He wanted to be an artist, move to New York, travel, and paint. And then Kaylee asks him uh, something like, "So that's where, Was so that's Rosie? where Rosie gets her artistic ability, her artistic talent." Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Ethan got her the art set for Christmas that we see in the mm-hmm. their meet cute scene. Yes. I thought that was really, that was, like, really sweet that, you know, he kind of, like, being able to see those similarities. Yeah. You know, and and family, the fact fact that they had them sharing that kind of thing as family and that being like, oh, is that something that you passed down to her? Is that the why she's so artistic? It's because she gets it from her uncle. Like, Mm -hmm. being an aunt... Like the other day, someone said that one of the twins, I have twin nieces and um, they said that one of the twins looked like me and like, it just kind of makes you all giddy inside to have anything where it's like, you know, you know, even if it was just something simple, like, you know, oh, they have your, you know, hair color or whatever, but like, yeah. Or, Hey, they, you know, like this, like you or whatever, or Mm -hmm. 
you yeah. know, that, that reminds me of you whenever you were that age, you know, it kind of makes you kind of giddy inside. Well, and it's proof too that like some things are an inherited behavior and not a taught behavior. Like with my dad, I'll notice a lot of times when I'm driving, I'll be sitting there like this right here with my hand on the wheel and I'll start getting tickled or like the other night we were doing something. Oh, we just got uh, a new TV. So we were like trying to make sure you could see everything from daddy's chair and whatever. So I got in his chair and kicked back because he reclines all the time. And it was like staring at it, make sure everything was okay, whatever. And I realized the way I was laying, I'm like, this is my dad. Like I have so many of my dad's mannerisms. It's hilarious. So I, I thought that was really sweet because obviously Ethan has barely been around. Like at the beginning of the movie, he's like, Let's see, they're like four and six, right? Oh, wait, yeah. 10 and eight, like, you yeah. know, or have, whatever the ages were. Yeah, um, but so, I mean, obviously, he hasn't been around them in however many years, really. You know, he he's kind of back, you know, he's still thinking of them as tiny and they've grown up on him. So, obviously, I mean, you can tell when he comes, they barely even know him. Like, they, they're like, Caleb, please stay. You know, like, they don't yeah. want to be left alone with him. And so to have that connection, mm-hmm. I thought was really sweet. I agree. Yeah. I loved the connection they had. And I feel like that was an open door for them to be able to bond. Seeing mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. they didn't get to be around them as well. Yeah. That, that painting happened. scene that uh, Kayla yeah, said. Was so that was, just, so, yeah, that was, that was so one sweet. of my favorite scenes too. Yeah. Ethan was engaged to the hotel heiress, Patricia Devine. And we find this out when Gina, uh, Kaylee's friend, gives Kaylee a call. And I guess Kaylee is at the store where she works. And, you know, she tells Kaylee that she finally uh, realizes where she knows uh, Ethan from, or like where she's seen him. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, she breaks the news that Mm -hmm. his ex-fiance is just, you know, hotel heiress. What were your thoughts on that? Were y'all, I know Hannah, you said you weren't expecting that. I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> I wasn't either. Yeah. I don't really know I what found, I thought. I, I found the whole, like, I find, I find the whole hotel heiress thing kind of oxymoronish. Because it's like, you're not really, like, royalty. You act like you're royal and everything, but yeah. you're you mm-hmm. all you have is like a hotel chain like i'm saying that 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 is pretty extravagant but it's like like yeah. it's not like you're the queen I know. Or, you, or your grandmother's the queen yeah. not a like, man <laughs> pretty man yeah <laughs> possible i mean but i can kind of see where it was a little i i was kind of like hannah i wasn't expecting her to be like a hotel heiress because you don't really oh, see them hannah. doing that a whole lot so yeah. kaylee she gets a call from Margaret and she unfortunately has to break the news to Lily and Rosie that uh, they are still stuck in New York and they can't make it home for Christmas. That scene broke my heart. Mm -hmm. Just the looks on uh, Rosie and Lily's face kind of made me cry a little bit. Like I think Rosie. Uh, Kayla's acting in that. Kayla's acting in that movie or in that scene was incredible, but yeah. the little girls, I feel like that was some of their best acting uh-huh. in yeah. the movie. Yeah. Um, in that like, particular scene. Yeah, like R- Rosie's like, what? Mommy and Daddy are going to be home for Christmas. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that was like, like, like as a kid, that is devastating to like have like not have your, your, your parents home. Yeah. And it's yeah. Christmas. Like, that's like every little kid's nightmare. I know. Mm -hmm. So the last two, uh, uh, I guess, major plot points in the movie are are big events that happen at the end of the movie are, uh, the first is Ethan pulled a few strings from some friends with a private plane to bring Rose and Lily's parents back home. And Mm -hmm. then... Kaylee took the job in New York and Ethan is moving to New York to Ethan is moving to the New York office while working on his art. So they're going to be living in the same city. Yep. And they're taking the kids on the 
yeah. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump back just a just a tad. I felt like one of the heartwarming. I don't know if that's quite the one of the all moments for me in this movie was when um, Ethan looked over and saw Lillian over there at the window so despondent yeah. and he's like is she okay and he just automatically goes to her because it showed to me kind of his full character arc at that point that he wasn't standing there awkwardly waiting on Kaylee um to do something that he just automatically took the initiative and went over there and um then obviously Kaylee confronting him with you don't just make a promise to a kid you know whatever um so I mean he's still in that learning curve but I felt like that was uh, a pivotal point for him in his character personally that I saw I agree yeah no I yeah I, I agree I, I love those kind of moments where it's kind of like something that you know where it's always kind of heartwarming to see a, a guy get you know soft with a child mm-hmm Oh, guys that are good with kids melt my heart. Yeah, absolutely. Like, one of my dad's buddies, he, we went to the same church for a little while and he was so good with kids. Like every kid in that church loved him to death and it melted my heart every time because it's just like, it's so cute. Because I mean, I guess it's like natural for a woman to be good with kids because we have that maternal instinct or whatever, but you don't really see that with men as much. So when you do, it just absolutely melts my heart. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But, like, I guess because he, like, you, you obviously, they were almost practically, like, strangers at the beginning of the movie. And then to see him kind of step into, like, that comfort zone of being the uncle and, like, being concerned for his niece Mm -hmm. was nice. Yeah. There's always that element to me of, and I always have to go because it wouldn't because the story would have been cut short if they would have done that this wouldn't have been so funny or whatever but there's always that element to me of okay if he could pull strings to get them there on Christmas Eve why did he not do that earlier in the story like yeah I don't know but I, again, I, I agree I I had I kind of had a little bit of a pet peeve with that too because it's like mm-hmm. oh you just had access to a private plane yeah like in, in people's in in his defense thing. there are times when the most obvious answer sometimes will not dawn on you or i will yeah. say to myself dawn on me yeah um I, one time i accidentally said if there is a uh if there's a hard way and a difficult way to go about something i'll find the difficult way and i went that's not what i meant to say but it's pretty accurate like i'm yeah. the person that will Same somehow here. or another find the hard way to do something yeah uh, the easy way will not dawn on me so, so, like my mom my mom will literally look at me and she's like morgan oh yeah my mom is so exasperated doing? with me <laughs> yeah like she will literally look at me and she's like morgan what are you doing and i'm like i'm doing what you told me to do. you told me to do this and she's like why are you doing it like that and i'm like what do you mean she's like you know you could do it like this right and i'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> that happens. i hate it yeah that happens sometimes i honestly <laughs> don't care though because it's like it's getting done. What is it? <laughs> it's, it's even worse whenever I'm tired. Mm-hmm. And you expect me being tired that my brain wouldn't want to do the most difficult thing. The mm-hmm. most difficult thing. It would want to do the easiest thing. But I guess my brain is too tired to think about what's the difference between the easy thing and the difficult thing. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it, it. It is kind of like this crazy thing where it's like, yeah, I'll get, let me just get the private jet to go and pick them up. Mm hmm. My yeah. thing is this, if they can't fly home through a regular airport, how is the private jet, like, I was yeah. wondering that too, yeah. what's the difference between them getting on the regular plane at the airport and your private jet? Well, I don't know, maybe because it's a smaller airport or something, so it wouldn't be as... Yeah, but like, I guess at the same time, it's like, isn't the reason why they're, they can't get on the plane because of the blizzard? Ever? Yeah. I don't that know. Would, that like, would, it, it that would have made more sense plane. to me if he had driven through the night to right. New York. But then again, why would they not have just, if he had done that, why would they not just have rented a car and driven home? So there exactly. was no easy explanation for <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. It was probably so, just like a filler for time. Yeah. yeah. It dragged out them getting to stay together that yeah. whole time. Um, 
I love. I mean, we can't lie, but it's just kind of like it's just kind of one of those things where it's kind of irks you because it's like, yeah, right. Those things always bother me. It's like, yeah, can you just be a little bit more realistic. Like, come on, like. Uh, my dad's my dad said they're gonna have to stop watching movies with me because since I worked on a movie, I start pointing out everything. I've always been the commentator, and now that I've worked on a movie, apparently I am ten times worse. Um. So she, like, she brought the so she the movie that she brought she brought home like she stayed with she came to uh, Louisiana for like three days while mm-hmm. we shot our intro she brought she brought the movie to my house and we watched it not gonna lie every other scene she paused it and explained <laughs> <laughs> and talked about like a ton of behind the scenes stuff was pausing it and pointing out different like extras talking about who they were. And like stories behind the scenes of like what happened that day, and like pinpointing like what stuff was like ad libbed and like not. You still had to rewatch this movie without me before we re before we. Uh, I know. I'm gonna. You're gonna have to send. Like you're gonna. Like I'm gonna have to buy the movie and rewatch it. And like because like I like what took what like what is probably like not even a two hour movie took like three hours to watch because she can't it and we were getting interrupted by animals too it wasn't just me <laughs> yeah like my my dog wouldn't lay down he kept wanting to get like in carrie's lap and then my cat ambrose kept wanting to like jump <laughs> everywhere and like get in front of the tv <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. gosh but yeah she was like, ne- like nearly pausing at every other scene explaining like what was going on behind the scenes and stuff so well the behind the scenes of stuff is always what like i've been oh i'm the same way i'm a behind the scenes yeah yeah like that's that's what i love about watching movies on amazon prime because they have that feature on the on the uh on i don't know if it's for available for every movie but they do a lot of that like trivia and like fun facts and goofs and stuff and they'll tell you things about in the movie that maybe you Mm -hmm. wouldn't catch so that's i'm kind of me and her are both like very much like behind the scenes goofs that Mm -hmm. just love that kind of stuff yeah, I yeah. do too. I like it too. So, yeah. Do the same thing. So. Do we want to talk about some of our favorite scenes that we haven't already mentioned? Yeah. yeah. I think... Um, Who wants to go first? I do. Okay. <laughs> I, think one of my, uh, I think one of my favorite things, honestly, that was kind of different about the movie was her mother. Um, I loved that when Kaylee was like all upset over Patricia and whatever that her mother was just like okay y'all are literally in the get to know each other stage he never lied to you he told you he had an ex-girlfriend you know whatever like he has never lied to you so what she's in hotel heiress what does that change like he broke up he told you he had a breakup you know, what does her status have anything to do with it? And then when she's just like, you're scared, you want this, you like him and you want this to be real. And she was like, the man flew us out here so you could have the perfect Christmas. I promise you, whatever he is feeling, it is real. Like, I loved that conversation. I did too. I was so shocked, and I, but I was so excited because I'm like, finally, they put like a realistic character. Because that's exactly what my mom would have been like to me. She would have been like, "Girl, yeah. <laughs> are you crazy? Yeah, like get some sense. Like, did you yeah. not just like, hello? I'm standing right here in front of you. I was over here. He flew me out here that, so you could have a Christmas. Like, I can see my mom doing that. Yeah. So like for me, I was like, yes, mama, yes. <laughs> like, please knock some sense into her. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was one of my I think, I think the one other thing um, with her mom that I loved was right at the beginning of the movie that FaceTime call. Yeah, when I, don't I don't, I don't remember exact. I might not be quoting this correctly, but when her mother said that I have um, it right her now. for this year needed it. to be faith over fear. Yep, and then she says, "You'll never know. Uh, you'll never know how things will turn out if you're too afraid to take the chance to go after something new." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I loved both of those scenes. Honestly, I think those were probably my favorite ones in the movie. Well, yeah. aside from the him remembering the movie for them to watch. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. those were great. I, I agree with Carrie. Those were my favorite too, because of the mom, like just having that mom scene, like, like 
you know, I feel like that was probably the mo- most realistic, like, mom scene I probably have seen in a, a mm-hmm. Hallmark type movie. Yeah. You know, because usually they don't, like, inc- especially whenever they're of age to not necessarily have to have the parents around. And they usually like, use, like, the best friend or, like, the coworker or whatever. They usually tend to go along with her in the feelings and, like, o- only take to her side of the story and not even caring about the guy's side of the story. And I'm definitely not that kind of person. Like I, my mom has drilled it into me that there is always one, uh, there's always two sides. Like there's always um, two sides of the story, and both of them could be very much wrong. Mm-hmm. It's like what is it? It's like her side, his side, and the truth. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's kind of what she's kind of always taught me. Like you have to listen to both sides, and even when you hear both sides, both of them, you like when you hear both sides, you can s- tell when like one is being blemished and the other one isn't mm-hmm. or whatever you know what i mean yeah and sometimes were- this is this communication too obviously yeah. but yeah like that's what i've so to see her kind of like straighten her out and be like you know you literally just met the dude mm-hmm. why are you getting so like bet- feeling so betrayed by a dude you barely know mm-hmm. that you're just now getting to know yeah i agree i i loved how realistic it was one scene that I really loved was Kaylee baking the Christmas cookies with Rose and Lily. I thought that was a cute scene. Mm-hmm. And how they, um, I can't remember which one of them. Oh, I think Kaylee had asked Ethan if uh, he wanted to join them. And he was like, nah, I'll just, you know, get back on my phone, make some calls. <laughs> I wish I had the cookie decorating skills that these people in TV land apparently have. <laughs> like, they know they're all like experts. I know. Like, mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah. Kaylee and Lily's conversation while making hot chocolate. Mm-hmm. That Decor- one was really cute. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Decorating the Christmas tree. I loved that scene. Mm-hmm. Although it was a little brief, but it was still really cute. Mm-hmm. I loved how um, they would kind of team and seem like they like one time it would be Ethan and Rosie and then another time it would be Ethan oh, and yeah. Lily and so yeah. it kind of seemed like it was back and forth and I loved that because it was like he was spending that quality time with each of them. Yeah, Kaylee and Ethan building this uh, snowman in teams uh, and then the snowball fight. I thought that was hilarious. The snowball That's funny because that was literally the scene going through my head when you started talking. Um, yeah, that was really, really cute. Did he say something about an old man? Like when, uh, like yeah, yeah, I have it written back. <laughs> I have it written down. I will say though, I will say as someone who has actually been like, maybe it was just the type of snow. Like Louisiana never hardly ever gets snow. And when we do, it's usually not, it, it's maybe like maybe three feet, like three feet. But with the one time that I've ever actually had a snowball fight, I'm just saying it hurts. Mm-hmm. It's not really actually fun. The snow doesn't just break up into like a, like a little cloud of dust or whatever yeah. on you. It, when it hits you, it hits you. <laughs> it is yeah. hard and it does not feel good. <laughs> but yeah, I have it written down. Um, Kaylee says, what happened to fair and square? Ethan says, I don't know what you're talking about. There's some old guy walking by that threw that. <laughs> <laughs> Typical male, okay. Typical male. And then, um, who was it? Lily. She's, you know, she looks at Kaylee and she's like, "Let's get him." <laughs> yeah, I love when she's like, "I am a snowbot." <laughs> like when she started doing that, her robot voice was good. That it was. was good. I was like, "Girl, good." Like that was good. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was hilarious. And then she went down. Like, <laughs> the Christmas toy drive, the Christmas karaoke. That was another one. Again, I was just slightly disappointed with that, that we didn't. Okay, I wasn't slightly disappointed. I was very disappointed that we didn't get to hear Kayla sing at all. Yeah, I wish we had um, gotten for, for all the, the singing, dancing that was obviously going on, or the girls. Like, did we even see the girls really singing? It was like constantly Ethan and Kaylee. No, no, yeah. They just had the music playing over like that whole yeah. section, like after like 
he's saying it was like the rest and i mean he like had his microphone turned towards the girls at one point yeah but you could tell like it was still them singing and he's like just doing his microphone but it's like i thought this was christmas karaoke because the girls wanted to do it and then the adults are taking out that is that is actually real life you're right there that the adults would be the ones getting into (laughs) that's real life that would probably be me (laughs) yeah I would totally push my ne- my my nephew my nephew out of the way and be like, give me that microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean they had that they brought that into the storyline mm-hmm. and didn't even have Kayla sing. I was yeah, like, I know. I know that was disappointing. Why? Why would you even yeah. put it in the in the in the story if you weren't even gonna have Kayla sing of all things? Yeah, I loved how Kaylee and I think the uh, girls too, Rose and Lily, they were like. Uh, you have to sing for your pizza. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you can't eat a piece of pizza until you sing karaoke. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I think um, Ethan like goes to, you know, get a piece of pizza and Kaylee was like, no sing, no pizza. <laughs> yeah. That was hilarious. Kaylee and Ethan making the gingerbread houses. I loved how, I think it was, Kaylee and Lily's like the roof broke I can't remember how mm-hmm. but like I guess they were trying to do something on the roof and like the roof just, well like, he broke the- his he broke the chimney off of his yeah and then uh they're like making fun of him for it and then there snaps and yeah. it's, he's like oh yeah now you now say something you know but like, have any of you actually successfully built a, a gingerbread house uh, no, I, have tried, I, I, tried one, I tried one last year and like the icing was really runny. Like it was just not. Yeah, it's never, yeah, it's never like, it, it, like I swear there's a trick. Like, I don't know if it's like you need to like, just don't like the store-bought frosting and make your own or something because it ne- like the frosting that comes in the packets never work. Yeah, it never works. I don't know. It doesn't even really taste good ever- either. I can only remember um, trying to build one gingerbread house. And it's been like so many years ago that I don't really remember. But I don't really remember the candy being that good. Like, yeah, it's you know, not, it like almost seems like you would rather. Like even the, ginger, the, even the gingerbread would be really hard. Mm-hmm. So you wouldn't even really be able to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like graham crackers. Like you would be better off to take yeah. graham crackers and build a build a house. Yeah, you could totally make a better gingerbread house out of graham crackers than you would the store bought gingerbread house and stuff. Yeah, I will say um, I have uh, made like gingerbread men from scratch for the last couple of Christmases, and it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I love gingerbread. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, gingerbread's good. Some people don't like it, but I, I think it's okay. I think I, like I know, it. like I like the little gingerbread cookies that you get from like Little Debbie. Mm-hmm. I like yeah. them, and like I see so many people talking about how they're they're nasty, and I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. well I know what I need to send y'all for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Another scene I loved was all of them making the ugly Christmas sweaters. That was really cute. Yeah, I forgot about that. Hmm. The last two I have on my list are the Christmas morning uh, scene, like when the, uh, Rose and Lily get up and then Lily's parents surprising them. And then the last scene with Kaylee and Ethan and then the gift exchange. Mm-hmm. Did they, uh-huh. did Kayla ever, did Kaylee ever mention to the girls that she was leaving and she got that job? I can't remember. I don't. Uh, well, it kind of got brought up. Well, it was more that one of the girls, and I don't remember which one it was. I kept getting them mixed up. Um, but one of the girls said something about that she had overheard her dad, her dad and Kaylee having a conversation, and that uh, Kaylee seemed really excited about it. So she was basically asking her, like, "Are you going to move? You know, whatever." And Kaylee was like, "You're never going to lose me. I'm never going to be away from you because I'll be in your heart." Whatever. So there was that type of conversation, but as far as like when she at the end of the movie, yeah. no, it was never discussed. Mm-hmm. Like it there was the that. conversation. Yeah, there was never a yes, I took the job with anybody but Ethan. So yeah. it was okay. uh, it was Lily. That uh, conversation you just mentioned. Uh-huh. Do y'all have any funny lines that we haven't 
mentioned that like really stuck out or made y'all laugh? I think the exchange, and we've kind of talked about this, but the exchange in the store with the, a, yeah, was, the, um, that was like, hilarious. yeah. Yeah, like I got here first. Oh no, my hand was totally on it before yours was. Well, I'm getting this for my niece. Are you getting it for your daughter? Because daughter Trump's niece. Well, no, technically, but it's for a child that I take care of. Well, I think we can safely say that niece Trump's boss's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> and like this conversation. <laughs> so that whole conversation, and then uh, we mentioned this earlier, but the when he when she opens the door, yeah, and he's there, she's like toy snatcher. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. That's definitely my favorite. Yeah, and I like. I really like the robot bit. Yeah, uh, like that was hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, I do yeah. have one from the beginning of the movie when she's on the phone with her parents, and um, I guess Kaylee's mom is talking about how, like, she can't believe that the job she has is a career, and she says. Here you are making businesses go virus. Oh yes. <laughs> that was and her husband just being like, it's not virus, but he doesn't tell her what it is. And she's like, mom, viral. <laughs> like, but the fact that he didn't tell her what it was, he just corrected her. It was like, that's not what it is. But then he didn't tell her what it was. <laughs> they were such a realistic couple. I mean, they really were. The, those were. parents were some of the most realistic TV parents I have ever seen. Yeah. Um, yeah whoever like wrote their lines specifically yeah they yeah. Did. well and even the looks like when uh her dad went on the walk with ethan and he just kind of you know kind of grins and raises his eyebrows at his wife like yep we're fixing to have conversations here like yeah. Yeah. you take care of that one i'll take care of this one you know <laughs> <laughs> i mean i love that i love how her dad just went after him like yeah love- yeah that's about it for funniest moments we can get into the would you rather questions now oh this should be good so the first would you rather question is would you rather spend christmas in a small town or a big city well i've never spent christmas in a big city there is part of me that would love to see new york city at christmas time i was gonna say i've never been to new york so there's part of me that would love to see that, but at the same time, I'm a person that very much would love to just have little traditions with my family. Like my family is pretty non-traditional, but like um, kind of my dream would be to have little traditions like they had in the in the movie where they had the Christmas list that like that last week before Christmas this is literally what they do every day is like everything that these girls have written down. And it's like just that really special time. So I know that doesn't necessarily have to be small town, but that's more what you think of when you think small town is like that, the uh, little homey traditions like that. So probably small town. Um, but there's a side of me that would like to at least experience a big city Christmas at some point in my life because I've never experienced it. So yeah, I'm the same way. That I, I definitely am. I'm like Carrie. I would love to at least have experienced it at least once in my life to be able to go see Christmas in New York because it's always been like this big thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The way that they decorate the city and everything, like even Christmas movies that you see where they're in New York and you see everything in New York and it's Christmas yeah. time and it's snowing and you you have like the Rockettes playing on um, and the Radio City Music Hall all lit, lit up. You've got, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But I guess having my own small town, like living in a small town like I do, we kind of go all out for Christmas. Like we do a Christmas parade. We even do like a block party where everybody like, they're like there's like hot cocoa stands on pretty much every corner of the town and the, everything's like lit up and all the stores are open and everybody like they have sales going on everybody's just like talking with each other and like hanging out with each other and going shopping together and just like you know that small town Christmas feel like I love my town because you can ask Carrie like she didn't really get to see it because of Christmas but like it's very much like a town that you would think would be in a Hallmark movie yeah and um, so I kind of like my small town Christmas 
And plus I had my own traditions with my family. Like they had their Christmas list. Uh, every year we go out and we go, whether it be like Hobby Lobby or we'll even order our ornaments online if we can, if we want like a specific ornament this year. Um, we always get to pick out uh, our own ornaments for the tree for our, for each year. That's so, awesome. you know, so, you know, I would probably stick with a small town, but if it would be like, it would be kind of like a bucket list moment to like, yeah, yeah. Go to like New York for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been to New York, but never at Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my best friend Jennifer has went to New York and she's, it's amazing. But yeah, to be able to see it, like it, it actually snowed when she was there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So seeing her pictures and how she talks about it, yeah, I would just for at least a day, even, I would love it. What about you, Hannah? Small town, for sure. Small town? Yep. More, it's, I feel like it's just more comfy and cozy. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cozy. Very cozy. Yeah. Definitely. I would probably love to go to Tennessee Mm. for Christmas. Yeah. Um, Stay in like a log cabin and, yeah, like yeah, a, it'd be a awesome. Hollywood. Christmas. Christmas at Dollywood. Not right here. Christmas for me. Yeah, there's nothing, honestly, there's <laughs> nothing like spending Christmas in a cabin. Like my family and I, we grew up, we would do that every couple of years and we're actually doing it again this year. We're That's gonna awesome. Go wow. cabin, like one of the whole sides of my family and we're just going to go there and stay for a few days. And it, it's really nice. So yeah, definitely. Would you rather bake Christmas cookies with homemade dough or pre-made dough? Homemade. Homemade. Pre-made. <laughs> I'm the only one that said pre-made, but it's only because I'm lazy. <laughs> Understand. I'm totally honest. <laughs> well, for me, like I love to bake. And um, there are times that I will use um, like a uh, pre-made dough or not a pre-made dough, but like, uh, like a Betty Crocker uh, mix or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but oh, there's Ambrose guys. One second. For me, <laughs> for me, um, like I say, my family is pretty non-traditional. So for me, baking every Christmas is like my little tradition that I have. So getting to um getting to mix all this stuff up. Funny story though um, that I will never live down was the time that I forgot to put the sugar in the sugar cookies. Oh no! Oh wow! Don't ask me oh, how wow. I managed that. <laughs> I feel like for me, I feel like for me, if I had like if I had you guys over and like we decided like, hey, let's make cookies, then I would probably mm-hmm. want to do it with homemade dough just for the experience of it. Yeah, but if it's just me, I'm gonna use pre-made. Dough. Because yeah. I'm lazy and I don't trust myself by myself to cook. No. I tried, I would say homemade dough, but I normally use pre-made dough. I tried homemade dough a few years ago and it didn't work out so well. It was like the cookies were so thin. Like, I think I did something wrong because the cookie dough was like so thin. It, the cookies would not bake. Like, I could like, not. There is an absolute science to it. I'm sorry. There's the one, like, I need more practice. One of, the one thing I cannot bake from scratch, and I do not know why, is chocolate chip cookies. No matter what recipe I have used, they melt. Like, they just, I'm like, what is it? What am I doing wrong? If I use the Betty Crocker mix, they are the most perfect cookies. But no matter what recipe I have used for chocolate chip cookies, now I found a recipe for oatmeal chocolate chip cookies and they turn out great. But I cannot make this plain chocolate chip cookie. So <laughs> like weird. what is the problem with this? That is really weird. But that's at the same time, weird. I'm telling you, there is an exact science when it comes to baking. Mm. Yeah. That's why I prefer and cookies. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a baker. When I'm when I'm baking at Christmas and I end up doing like a double batch of sugar cookies, because I will I will literally like give these out as gifts to people, like just bake and give them a box of baked goods. And when you cut out, when you deal with like six dozen sugar cookies, I am getting pretty grouchy by the end of that. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but um but at the same time, like uh, a couple of years ago, well, it's 2019 um, when I met the shells that for Christmas that year, I sent them, and this was all from scratch, all homemade. I sent them gingerbread cookies, sugar cookies, peanut butter cookies, a apple pecan cake, a butter pecan cake. And this was like two shipments, like, cause, oh, and Brookies. Um, 
So, and if you don't know what brookies are, they're like brownies with chocolate chip cookies baked on top of them. Um, so like I sent all this stuff to them. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's, I, I love to bake and I love to do that for people like um, kind of usually um, my Christmas gift to my pastor of whatever church I would be going to and um, to my pastor and his wife, I would bake them a cake and nice. do that. So oh. that's, that's what I would usually do was uh, bake an apple pecan cake and give it to them so I will say I don't know that it's any cheaper than just going out and buy because baking is not cheap no it's not 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 at all would you rather build a snowman or have a snowball fight definitely build a snowman <laughs> build a 100%, snowman. 100% tell yeah. you guys snowball fights are hard mm-hmm. they're yeah. not fun yep now, if you oh. had like the fake snow, all that maybe, but whenever mm-hmm. you've got like real snow that is literally just like ice, mm-hmm. it does hurt. Yeah, it's literally like getting like a bunch of ice cubes and yeah, chucking them at your yeah, you've like melted this together into yeah. a ball, and it like it's like a big ice cube that you're just chunking yes. at your friends. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, like, if, if you really think about it, it's not fun. <laughs> no. And then if you have and, some that's so soft, really it won't really pack. Fun. That's not fun either. <laughs> well, if you think about it, making a snowman really isn't that fun either because it's very hard. Like, unless you've got some really good upper body strength, like, putting mm-hmm. those big, huge, like, boulders on top of each other, mm-hmm. not easy. I know. Now, if you're making a small one or whatever, cool. But, Yeah. Would you rather sing Christmas karaoke or watch Hallmark Christmas movies? Both. Both, yeah. <laughs> you can't go wrong with both. I'm not, I refuse to pick one. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get, going to make somebody mad if I pick one. Um, I don't, I really don't know because. I feel like I would probably be the one to pick Christmas karaoke simply because I love to sing so much. Like you cannot shut yeah, me up. Same here. Same here. So <laughs> I don't know. Like I love. How about, how about we just watch a movie that has Christmas karaoke in it and sing along whenever they sing? There you go. Yeah, I like yeah. it. I like it. Well, cool. There you go. <laughs> Best of both Compromise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Would you rather bake Christmas cookies or build a gingerbread house? Bake cookies. 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 <laughs> that did not we take just really talk. We, 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 we were literally just talking about how impossible it is. <laughs> like, they make it so easy on TV and everything. It's not. Mm-mm. Like... Unless you ba- unless you literally bought baked everything from scratch, and I feel like even then, it's hard still. Yeah, like there's an exact science to it too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, baking cookies. Would you rather buy an ugly Christmas sweater or make one? Buy it. Bye. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of. Ha- I- I'm a little bit like my mom. I'm- I kind of have a crafty side to me. So I would at least attempt to make yeah. one. Yeah, I would. And if I butcher it, it and it doesn't really look as ugly as I wanted it to or whatever, <laughs> then I'll go buy one. Yeah. See, my problem is I like cute, ugly sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want it to actually be ugly. So, yeah. like, if I, if I do no, make I, it ugly. I think I have ever worn I'll, an yeah. ugly Christmas sweater in my life. I have. I want one like so bad. Like, I feel like it would be fun to go to a it's Christmas so party. so fun. To go it to is. an ugly sweater party. Like, I don't know. That's just me. Now, my family would be like, I am not putting that thing on. Morgan and Carrie, did y'all have any would you rather questions you wanted to ask? Carrie, you want to go first? Uh, sure. Would you rather sing Oh Holy Night in public or dance in the Nutcracker? Holy Night. Definitely. Yeah. Same yeah. Way. Oh Holy Night. I feel I'm like all of us. I am yeah. not a very good dancer. So <laughs> I don't even know how to dance. So I don't even know if I'm a good dancer or not. Well, I mean, I the nutcracker is like the nutcracker is like ballet. Oh, I know. I'm gonna see it. So I did take ballet when I was a little girl. I did too. I did too. 
Yeah. Mm. Um, would you rather, this one's interesting. Would you rather meet Santa Claus or Frosty the Snowman? Ooh. Let's go with Frosty. I loved Frosty the Snowman when I was a kid. Right? So, yeah, yeah. Let's go with Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> I have a like I have a Frosty the Snowman. Uh, we have like a little tiny Frosty the Snowman uh, statue that came with our DVD. Mm-hmm. So uh, probably Frosty. Yeah. yeah, I still love the cartoon. I'm not gonna lie. Me too. Uh, we watch, we, we'd watch all of those old classic like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, the New I Year. I still Bay love that thing. too. Yeah. Yeah, Frosty the Snowman. Oh, I don't care what time of year it is. If I'm needing like just a happy movie, I put in like I have a DVD collection that has um, Rudolph the Reindeer, Reindeer, um, Frosty the Snowman, and uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And those are my happy movies. Like mainly um, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and then yeah. Frosty after that. But like I don't care what time of year it is. If I need a happy movie, that's what I put in. Yeah, same yeah. here. Do you have one more? Would you rather question to share, Carrie? Um, let's see. I did. Hang on just a second. Uh, my phone died, so my would you rather list is is non-existent. Oh, so oh. we'll just um the the one other one was uh would you rather get only a stocking for christmas or only one present probably honestly i might like i know this is kind of shocking but probably the stocking um probably just one gift i'll say the one gift because it's not specific yeah i don't really know because it's like with a stocking you have several little gifts so would you rather get several little gifts or one bigger gift right. that obviously wouldn't fit in a stocking one big gift, probably. One big I gift. mean, my thing is this. You can get money in a stocking and buy whatever you want. That's true. My mom has put gift cards in our stockings before. And candy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, like, phone cases. And, like, you know, chargers. Things like that. So, yeah. I mean, that's what I think of when I think of a stocking. Most people just think of candy and, like, little toys. But, yeah. So. This is true. Yeah, I'm one of these people that I'm like, a gift card never insults me. No, it really doesn't. Like so many people feel like that is a thoughtless gift or whatever. And I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh. I would much rather you get me an Amazon gift card oh, yes. and let me get something off of my very extensive Amazon wish list. 100%. Than for you to get me something that I could care less about, in all honesty. And I'm going to go, oh, thank you. I'm never going to use this. And that last part is in your head, you know, like. Exactly. So. Yeah. Um, I would much rather, and like, I feel guilty. Pretty much all I ever want for Christmas or whatever is movies. I am, I'm an obsessive collector. So I feel guilty asking someone to buy me movies when they know what my collection is already like. Um, now last year and this year, that is what my mom has done for me. And last year she did such an incredible job. So I'm curious to see what she got this year. I want to go and do things. I kind of want to make memories more than I want to just be bought a gift. So you would rather have an experience yeah. than a uh, item. Yeah, like either give me money yeah, or let's go make a trip, make, make plans for us to go do something. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, I get that. And, yeah, and so like, and, but my brother, he's just like, give me money. <laughs> I mean, and, for real though, <laughs> Who does, why is it that when you're a kid, because everyone gives guilty. your money? I, I feel guilty because, like, I have a job. Yeah. If, yeah. I, if I have something that is on my list that's kind of extensive that I know, like, the only thing that ever comes to my mind when it comes to wanting, like, what do you want, like, what do you want to want for Christmas or whatever? I don't necessarily think, like, my mind doesn't automatically go to, like, an actual, like, Christmas gift. Mm-hmm. It's like, what do I want right now? What has been something that I've kind of put on my, like, list of something that I eventually want to buy for myself? Mm-hmm. Like, right now, I can't, too, I want to get, like, me, I, I kind of want to get, like, an iPad or mm-hmm. whatever. Something that I can kind of bring with me all around, all, all the time or whatever. I'm not going to ask my mom to buy me no, like, $400 iPad. Right. I've got my own job. I'm not going to ask her to do that. But it's like at the same time getting asked that question, it's like you can't really think of like an actual good, yeah. like not hugely priced gift to tell someone mm-hmm. to get you. Right. I mean, who, so. this, this is one thing that's confusing to me. Like when you're a kid, everyone gives you money. And then when you grow up, 
they suddenly decide you don't need that anymore when in reality that's when you need it right <laughs> right yeah so like would you guys rather like uh, going off that would you guys rather have an experience like be able to like go do something with the family uh, like your mom or whoever or would you rather them give you money or a gift um Ooh. <laughs> I mean, I love traveling, so I guess an experience. I would probably, yeah. Like, well, one year, I think I was in, uh, what grade? I think I was in 10th grade. Um, I got tickets to uh, Taylor Swift, like concert tickets to Taylor Swift. And then I got, along with it, I got um, a pair of, like, cowgirl boots. That was, like, my big gift for that year. Yeah. I really don't know like I feel like it just depends because again it like with my family that's just not stuff they're into like y'all know I love um I love traveling I love going on trips and whatever but that's not something my family does like we we never go on vacation and stuff until I started tripping uh going on road trips by myself we never really went anywhere so um but my mom joked around about um uh like giving me a trip to Mount Airy for Christmas I'm like heck I'll take it you know like I love that but my family isn't necessarily the type to go do stuff like we've never really been to concerts or anything like that so we don't go to museums or (laughs) go to this play or that play or whatever so I I don't know uh I think it would have to depend on what it was with my family I would probably just as soon you give me money and let me pick my own whether I want to go on a trip or you know whatever so yeah I would do I, like if it was my mom giving like my mom it would probably be like an experience mm-hmm. um just because like we work a lot we try like we do like travel a good bit together like we just went to Texas not too long ago and we went to Mississippi not too long ago so I mean and we we're thinking about doing like a small little trip uh hopefully soon i would love to go back to tennessee um i loved it when we went to tennessee i would love to go back don't forget to come pick me up (laughs) 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 yeah so i would love that we really do need to do like a big like podcast i know that would be fun because i mean we're all from the south like all of us are like in southern states so Mm -hmm. it wouldn't be that hard we could all i think we all i think we think we said that the destination would probably be Alabama it'd probably be the best place for all of us to meet up mm-hmm. don't know where in Alabama would go <laughs> but <laughs> I'm game I don't care that um, would be fine. It would. Yeah. um I would love to go back I would love to go to Tennessee um I would love to go to South Carolina to Charleston I would love to go to you know Georgia uh I want to go back to Savannah and Charleston. Oh, yeah, I would. Yeah, I want, I want to drive. Isn't there like a bridge or something that's like between Savannah and Charleston? Like, there's a big old long bridge or something. And I'm like, I want to drive that. I want to take that route from Savannah to Charleston. I think that would be really cool. Well, I have a friend that's stationed in South Carolina. He's in the oh, yeah. Air Force. So I would love to like go and see him and go see Nicole and just kind of like. And I've always heard that Charleston is really beautiful. Oh, it so, is. Yeah, I would love to go to Charleston. Yeah, yeah, it is really fun. But I would love to go see Amy in Texas and see Casey in Florida, and like I, I would love to do all of these things. Mm. I would love to go to California at least once. Go to New York at least once. Um, I would love to go to Canada. I've always heard that, like you know, everyone always talks about how beautiful Canada is. Um, I would fingers love to crossed, go. we all get to go to a Hardy's family reunion. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. That would be so fun. That would be the ultimate thing. I've already told Hannah, but I am going to Roma Drama in January. Awesome. Oh. I wish I could, I wish y'all could go. I, I really wish so bad. Especially now that Tyler's going to be there. Y'all know, y'all know Tyler is like my homework crush right yeah. now. So her, like, her, cr- her crush is Tyler. Is Ty- her crush is Tyler and mine's Kevin. So if there is ever an event where both of them are there, you will most likely see me and Carrie doing everything <laughs> that we can to go to that event. I wish y'all could go. That would be so much fun. There's a lot of fun. I know. It would. 
Well, thank you guys for allowing us to be on the podcast. I had a lot of fun. I thought it was really fun to be too. able to collab with yeah, you guys. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We'll definitely yeah, have to do this again. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. We've got some plans. Trust me. Oh, yeah. More podcast, yeah. Collabor- More podcast collaboration plans in the future. Oh, definitely. yeah. We're definitely having y'all on as well. If oh, we haven't okay. scared you off by now. <laughs> <laughs> And where can we find your, your podcast for anyone listening that hasn't uh, already tuned in? And where can they follow you on social media? Well, we have our YouTube channel, which is Honest to Goodness. And we're also on Anchor, which is connected to Spotify. So you would just find us under that title as well. We have our podcast Instagram, which is Honest Goodness Pod on instagram and the link to where you can find us um like on youtube anchor spotify all that stuff is in our bio on our link tree um my instagram that we are live on um is at hardy forever and always and morgan i'll let you plug your own Uh, my Instagram that I use whenever I do lives uh, is at Team Nathan Grant. Mm-hmm. So right, those would be the those are the Instagrams that you will pretty much see us do lives. We try doing lives on our actual podcast Instagram, and it just didn't really work very well. So no. yeah, if you want to see us on live, which is also very entertaining, then check out those Instagram accounts. Mm -hmm. all right and i will link those down below in the description so that everyone it'll be easy for everyone to find y'all so thank you so much for coming on this was fun this was fun and thank you everyone for listening to our recap of the up tv original christmas movie snowed in for christmas and we will see you next time we love y'all bye